Hello everyone, this is Alpha, and welcome to another Minecraft Redstone tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about sequential counters. Uh, sequential counters are very commonly found on PvP maps to keep track of the uh, team scores, or the amount of objectives that have been captured, or the amount of time left. So they're pretty useful. And what I've created here is a very compact and very simple uh, wireless sequential counter. Um, and how this works is basically we can send a command to it from anywhere. That's to reset it. We can increment it. Or we can subtract from it. And the beauty of this is that we can uh, add to the counter from anywhere. We can remove from the counter from anywhere, we can reset the counter anywhere, and we can also display the counter in multiple places based on the the same numbers. So this and this are two different styles of displaying the, the counter. Uh, this one's kind of an individual um, second chosen out of five option. And this is a more, uh, more like a progress indicator, so it's two-fifths complete. And uh, both of them are running off the same scoreboard, though. Uh, so it's very handy if you wanted to display a scoreboard scoreboard at both ends of a PvP map, for example. Uh, no need for messy wiring. And like I said, it's very small. So uh, I'll be right back and I'll explain how it works exactly. All right, guys. So uh, let me show you how this all works. Uh, it's very simple, uh, but before any of these command blocks will work, we have to set up our objective. Um, so, I don't want to get too far into the scoreboard stuff, because this is uh, a topic that could have many videos in itself, uh, but basically we're using the brand new scoreboard command in Minecraft 1.5 to create an objective called counter of the type dummy. And dummy just means that it's not something that Minecraft uh, already keeps track of, like kills and deaths. Uh, for our purposes, it's basically just a variable. Um, now if we come back over here to where we were sending the commands, uh, this we're again using the scoreboard command. Uh, this time we're saying players set at a counter zero, and that just means the, the at a is targeting all players. So it's setting the counter on all players to zero. And you can use this for any value as well. I mean, it doesn't have to be zero. If you wanted a counter that started at 10 and counted down to zero, you would reset it to 10. Uh, if we come over here, though, uh, very simple again. It's very similar. We're just, instead of setting, we're adding to the counter, and we're adding one to it. Uh, again, this could be any value. It could be uh, multiples of two or four or something. If you were creating a particular map style where uh, that was necessary. And here is the exact same thing again, uh, but instead of add, we're removing one from the counter. Now, all of those um, are being stored on every user, and uh, basically when we come back here, we've got a clock running, and it's sending pulses to all these command blocks, and each of these command blocks uh, is testing for a player, any player, uh, with a score, um, or the scoreboard with the name counter, which is the one that we just created, uh, that has a minimum of five and a maximum of five. Uh, so basically it means it is five, because if it isn't uh, above five and it isn't below five, it has to be five. Uh, the same goes for four and three, two, one. Uh, and then these test for commands, uh, if you put a comparator next to those command blocks and the test for returns true, uh, it outputs a signal to these uh, blocks here. So very simple. Uh, the only difference between uh, that and this version, which is more of a progress bar, um, is that these command blocks don't have a maximum. Uh, so this is minimum one, 
and minimum 2. Since we're at 2, uh, both of these meet that minimum requirement. And if, you know, minimum 3, when we get to 3, very simple. Uh, exact same footprint. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'll be right back and I'll show you a few of the other designs I created. Alright guys, so the only caveat to that previous design is that uh, you need to use command blocks, and command blocks do not work in uh, a survival world without uh, using the give command or without using something like mcedit. And the give command, if you are interested, is give uh, player name 137. Uh, 137 is the command block, and then you can right click on it and set the console command. Uh, now, if you cannot use a command block, uh, here's a, another kind of counter. Uh, it's a very simple one. Uh, there's no way to reset this one partway through, but it does auto-reset when it gets to the end. Uh, it's very fast, though, and it's also very simple and pretty small. Uh, so what's happening here? I'm not going to go too much in depth with these ones because the, the wireless one is probably more practical for most situations. Uh, but basically what we have here is um, a hopper pointing into another hopper, pointing into another hopper, etc. Uh, it goes in a big loop, you can see this, and back to the beginning. Uh, now the hoppers that are on this side, the output side, um, they are by default being powered by this redstone signal. And that's locking the hoppers so that this item that's inside um, basically stays and sends a signal to the comparator uh, to the output. Uh, now, to advance this item to the next hopper, we have to send a short pulse to the hopper. Uh, however, the normal pulse from a button is too, uh, too long, so we use this pulse limiter or pulse shortener. Uh, to create a very short pulse and it's just long enough that the item can pass from uh, one hopper to the next. So I'll just uh, show you that if I can. Kind of an awkward angle, but you know what, I'll just put a button here. There we go. Uh, so watch the signal. It's very quick. And that's just enough for the, the item to pass through. Now when it gets to the end, uh, there's no redstone uh, dust on these other hoppers because we just want the, the item to return back to its starting place. Uh, we don't want it to get stuck over here because there's no output here, so there's no point in, in stopping it. Uh, that being said, if we wanted this counter to be 0 to 5 instead of 1 to 5, uh, this could act as our 0, this hopper here. So if we put some redstone dust there and lock it, just like the others, um, when it comes around, uh, the reset line, it will stop here and the sequence will have to start again when you press it. So um, it'll go blank for a second, then you can start again at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, that's pretty much it though. It's, again, it's another very simple design. Um, now on to the next one. Alright, so this design is based on the previous one. Um, it's just slightly more complex. Uh, same as before, we just press this button and it increments the timer, or the counter rather. And when we come over here, we can reset the entire thing from anywhere in the sequence uh, back to the start. Uh, it's obviously a bit more complex, but the principle is still the same. We come down here, uh, we still have this chain of hoppers. So we have hopper, 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 and they go into this dropper, and the dropper faces this bottom hopper, and hopper, 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 and then we have this dropper facing upwards and the dropper facing hopper. Um, so it's a little bit different than the last one, but the principle is still the same. The uh, hoppers along this top are all being powered by default by redstone dust, uh, which is locking them. And again, we have a single item in one of the hoppers, and the 
output from comparators for the item in the hopper is what gives us our signal. Uh, now where the magic comes into play uh, is this reset line. So in the previous design, um, the reset was on the side. So it would basically go in a big horizontal loop. Whoops. Uh, in this one, the reset line is along the bottom. So it goes in a vertical loop. Uh, but the thing about hoppers is that even though this hopper is facing this one, uh, with a hopper below it, if it's unpowered, it will actually take the items out of this uh, powered hopper. Um, so basically, the the loop comes along here, along here, back down, along here. But if at any point we decide here that we want to reset it, we can just interrupt that cycle and bring it down right here and across. And the way we do that is uh, by using an RS door latch. Um, so we basically have two states. Uh, we have this powered state where all these repeaters are locking the bottom hoppers. And we have a state where all of these are unpowered, and so all of these hoppers are free to uh, let an item pass through. Um, for this demonstration, I'm actually going to move this couple. So right now, we have an item in this hopper. Uh, say we wanted to press the reset now, uh, what would happen is it would send a pulse down this line to this RS NOR latch, and this RS NOR latch would toggle the state from this online, or this, uh, this <laughs> online, uh, this powered state uh, to an unpowered state. Uh, and when that becomes unpowered, the item from this hopper goes down into this hopper, which is now unpowered, and that gets sent along the line to uh, this dropper. That dropper then sends a signal to the comparator that there's an item there now, which sends the signal along here to the other side of the RS door latch, switching it back to the powered state. Uh, so it basically stays powered just long enough for the item to make it to the end here, and then it turns itself off. Um, or, I guess, on, technically, but it stops the, the hoppers from sucking any items out. Uh, now, while it's doing that, it also brings a signal out to this repeater, which sends a strong uh, redstone signal to this bottom dropper, uh, which also powers this top dropper, so the item goes from here to this hopper right away. Um, so, I guess we'll see it in action. Um, this reset button is the same as this button. Uh, and that comparator is the same as this button. So uh, from back here, I can just press this button and you can see the item uh, it left this uh, hopper, went through the chain here, uh, sent a signal through here, and reset the RS door latch. So uh, those are the basics of that. Everything else is the same. We still have a, a pulse limiter. We still have the the locking hoppers, we still have the reset line, it's just a bit of an adjustment in uh, the positioning, and then we added an or RS nor latch to, uh, to lock the bottom ones. Alright guys, one last thing before I go. Uh, the original reason I was playing around with all these counters was uh, actually to uh, fulfill a, a kind of request on Reddit. Uh, so I was reading the Redstone subreddit, and someone was asking if there was a way to um, kind of increment between different server messages every five minutes, uh, like custom welcome messages and that sort of thing. Um, so I started kind of playing around with designs for that. This is where this all began, was uh, just playing around with a timer hooked up to a bunch of uh, hoppers and droppers, and uh, it kind of evolved. I just got really interested in the idea of creating uh, these different variations and being able to reset them and uh, being able to output the signal more compactly. Uh, and so it kind of evolved into that, but I wanted to go back to the original request, uh, since it does vary slightly, but uh, still maintains the same concepts. Um, so we have a five minute timer down here. This is a Seth Bling design. 
uh, based on an etho design. Uh, basically there are a bunch of items in here that take exactly five minutes to rotate around. Um, for every item that you have in a hopper it takes 1.6 seconds for it to make it around. Um, I think Sethling said it took 1.4 when he was doing it, but that was before Minecraft 1.5. I believe they have changed that to make it slower but more consistent. Um, so I found 1.6 was very accurate. Um, so uh, 300 seconds, which is 5 minutes, um, divided by uh, 1.6, and divided again by 64 is 2.9 stacks, which is 64, 64, and 60. Uh, so somewhere in here, so those are emptying now, so 64, 64, and 60 uh, takes five minutes to go around. If you've been attentive, uh, you may have seen uh, some messages coming up in the corner here, and that's all from this. Uh, so this timer uh, outputs to a pulse limiter, just like the other, other designs, the pulse limiter is required so that the, uh, the items just go from one hopper to one hopper instead of kind of jumping around randomly. Um, and the, the signal just goes up the staircase, uh, locks all of these hoppers by default, and whichever hopper has an item in it, which is currently this one, uh, outputs to a comparator, which then outputs to a command block, and these all have, uh, say, message 4, say, message 5, that sort of thing. Um, now, it's also very easy to extend. Uh, you would just take this chain of hoppers and bring it out this way, and do the same for the comparators, do the same for the command blocks, and boom, you've got more. <laughs> it's very easy. Um, yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I'm done. I'll, I'll leave these kind of like older pre-stage type things uh, in the world when I put it up for a world download. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're not very efficient, not very space efficient. Uh, but I'll leave them there for kicks. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please leave a like or a comment. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'll definitely be putting out more. I have tons of ideas for how to uh, create more wireless devices, and uh, I may make a PvP map in the future. So stay tuned. Uh, for now, I'm out. So thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.